I don't mean to sound unreasonable, but... Uh, I beg your pardon? My sign. That wasn't exactly what I had in mind. Ah, but you should. This is today's special. News. It is, huh? And I'm here to tell you about it. You don't say. A new line of motor oils. I'm listening. That offers you bigger opportunities for more profit. More profit? Well, now I am listening. Your new line of Sinclair Dino Oils for passenger cars. Sinclair Dino Econ Oil, a brand new oil. Sinclair's answer to low price competition. Sinclair Dino Dinoline, a full-fledged heavy-duty oil replacing opaline. Sinclair Dino Extra Duty, a single-grade oil that exceeds all car manufacturers' specifications. Sinclair Dino Supreme Multigrade, the finest oil made at any price. I thought we already had a pretty good line. Mighty good line. And now a new one? Why? These new oils are specially formulated, not only for today's engines, but to take care of engine requirements in the future, down the road. Well, I'm still asking the question. Why now? Let's answer it this way. This is the heart of the modern car. Man! What a dream! Exactly. And every car buyer has one. A dream, that is. It has many sounds, this dream. Here's one. Honey, guess what? That car we looked at? I bought it. Yeah, the one with the bucket seats. I'm not kidding. I just came from the car dealer. And with that great big engine. How about that? What's that? Well, I know we don't really need all that horsepower, but if we ever do, Brother, have we got it. Familiar? Yeah. And notice that big dream look in the eyes. Very popular today. Big engine feel. The big engine of his new car is designed to move out. Move fast and move long distances at superhighway speeds. And that's what he dreams of doing. Hey, what's this? Reality. More reality. Well, of course I'm taking a car to the drugstore, Henry. After all, it is two blocks away. Who walks two blocks today? Short trips, low speeds, stop and go. Hardest kind of driving for engines, especially today's high compression jobs. Engines are bigger, more complex. Parts are built to closer tolerances, are better fitting. Why a new line of oil? Because while engines have changed, our day-to-day -day driving habits haven't. This makes for lubrication and engine protection problems. Better oils, improved additives, New formulations are required to solve these problems. Sinclair has always led the field, met change with change. Has always maintained a margin of quality above the requirements of engines of the time. And there's no better example of Sinclair superiority than Dino Supreme Multigrade. Read what it says on the can. Formulated to provide superior engine protection throughout the oil drain intervals, recommended by all car manufacturers, exceeds all car makers' most severe service test requirements. And here, the real clincher. Of four major oil companies, top motor oil brands, tested by a large independent laboratory, Sinclair Dino Supreme Multigrade rated highest in sludge control. The test procedures used were those accepted by all major car manufacturers. Multigrade for all weather protection. That's part of the Dino Supreme story. And that gets us into the matter of viscosity index improver. 
Viscosity is the measure of oil's tendency to flow. Thank you. A viscosity index improver makes it possible for one oil to be the right grade for best lubrication in any weather. Motor oil? Right. Chilled to a temperature of zero. Care to crank? The other one? Uh, may I? Feels like molasses in January. Or a 30-weight oil on a cold winter morning. Takes hard cranking to turn over an engine under conditions like those. Rough on the battery. But a 10W or a 10W30 makes for easy cold weather cranking. Oh, here. For real ice cream. And bring me a soda a little later, huh? Yes, sir. A double chocolate. Double chocolate. Here, right out of the zero degree deep freeze. Three oils. 30, 10W, and 10W30. Dino Supreme Multigrade? Right. Watch. You can see for yourself that Dino Supreme will flow like a 10W oil in sub-freezing temperatures. Gives you not only quick starts, but quick lubrication to the moving parts of the engine. And remember, most engine wear occurs when you first start it up. Now, let's look at the other side of the coin. Temperature, 240 degrees. Does oil get that hot? Oh, in hard summer driving, it sometimes gets as high as 250 degrees. This is when an oil has to hold its body to provide the proper lubrication. Watch this. Hey, Dino Supreme flows like the 30 weight now, doesn't it? Right, and a 20 weight when conditions call for it. The action of the viscosity index improver is as automatic as a thermostat in your home heating system. By its automatic action, the engine always gets exactly the right weight oil, regardless of driving conditions, regardless of temperatures. Here's another example of Sinclair superiority. Parts in today's big engines, such as this camshaft, take a real beating. Wherever two moving parts come together, the pressures of part on part are greater than ever. Sinclair has added an anti-corrosion, anti-wear nickel compound to its Dino Supreme multigrade oil. It, rather than the engine metal, takes the scuffing and wear action. It's like the wax your wife puts on her kitchen floor. It takes the beating rather than the vinyl itself. However, where your wife has to re-wax the floor to remove the scuffing and renew protection, this amazing liquid nickel compound continuously and automatically maintains a micro-thin armor plating protection on engine parts. Well, sounds like it's mighty good for engines. Especially for today's engines. It's exclusive with Dino Supreme Multigrade and patented. What about these other oils? Anything new? Yes, indeed. Let's take another look at the whole line. Of course, this brand new oil has been formulated strictly to meet low price competition. This oil is a good oil. Will more than meet oil needs of many motorists. These two meet all car manufacturers' warranty requirements. Think of them as good, better, and best. All have improved additives, improved formulations. The anti-foam additive, for example. Some of those new engines coming out really churn up the oil. Foam can be a serious problem. Double chocolate. Ah, right on cue. Nothing but wet air. Soda foam makes for poor refreshment. Thank you. Oil foam makes for poor lubrication. Thank you. Foam creates an oil starvation condition. Leads to poor cooling, clattering valve lifters, excessive engine wear, possible damage. Here, we have oil foam being created.
Now we add Sinclair anti-foam additive. Watch what happens. Really works, doesn't it? It really works. And better than ever before because it's been improved. Now, let's talk about contaminants. Road dirt, carbon, other blow-by particles, and rust. These, along with combustion acids and partly burned fuel, are the real killers of engine performance, power, and life. Cold temperatures invite these contaminants to group together. Real gunk and goo, huh? Right, sludge. In high temperature operations, some of it gets converted into varnish, coating engine parts. Also bad for engines, but well, how do you lick it? With dispersants that work on the principle of holding particles in suspension, keeping these contaminants from getting friendly and combining with each other. Here's how it works. Here are two containers of water. I'll add dispersant to one jar only. Now, I'll sprinkle carbon black on the surface of the water. That's like uh, carbon in an engine? Practically the same. <laughs> Stuff sure clings together. But watch what happens when I add carbon black to the jar with a dispersant. And combustion byproducts are dispersed in the same way. Pretty amazing. And pretty significant. How do you figure? With today's bigger engines, with all our stop and go driving, contaminants collect faster. More of them get down into the crankcase. More chance for sludge making. That's why Sinclair's improved dispersant formulation is big news. Its suspension capacity has been increased. It keeps the sludge particles in suspension, and when the oil is drained, out goes the sludge. But even so, no dispersant has unlimited suspension power. Don't let your customers kid themselves about oil changes. If they want to cut engine wear, keep that new car pep. Get top engine power and performance. Frequent oil changes are a must. Show me a customer who doesn't. And top engine performance demands a top anti-rust and anti-corrosion additive in oil. Uh, there's nothing new about rust. We run into it all the time with tailpipes and mufflers. But have you noticed? More mufflers and tailpipes rust from the inside out rather than the outside in. And from what? From moisture that originates as a byproduct of combustion and condensation. But what does that have to do with the inside of an engine? I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to, that is, she's going to show you. Here we have two oils. One with anti-rust and anti-corrosion additive, the other without. A beaker of your uh, so-called water, two strips of steel. Now watch. Let's just speed up 15 minutes into 15 seconds. Man, that's sort of powerful stuff, isn't it? Actually, it's a solution of various combustion acids, one of which is sulfuric, is in a car battery. And if any of it spills, you know what that can do to your clothes. I get the message. Thank you for your help. We uh, both thank you. <clears throat> All this stuff doesn't go out the exhaust and tailpipe. Most does, but some doesn't. The part that doesn't winds up in the crankcase and circulates throughout the lubrication system. Rust is murder on close-fitting parts like valve lifters. This is the sort of corrosion damage that can result. 
but with Sinclair's improved rust and corrosion inhibitors, today's engines stay in new condition for many thousands of miles of the most severe stop-and-go service. Well, there you have the story in brief. Yeah, only one thing. What's that? Well, with this new dyno line, sounds like I'm going to get less oil change business rather than more. Not at all. Regular and frequent oil changes are more important than ever before with today's more complicated engines. Sinclair endorses the recommendation of the world's largest automobile manufacturer and the American Petroleum Institute. Change oil at least every 60 days. Oil is oil. Never heard any different from the man at my service station. Hear that? Never heard any different. And customers never will unless you tell them. Unless you sell them. And that means getting under the hood. The new Sinclair Dino line offers more profit opportunities than ever before for those who go after it. And again, that means getting under every one of those hoods. You uh, really believe that, don't you? Don't you? I'll show you. Good afternoon. Hi. Uh, oil change, I guess. Wife's car. School, shopping, driving pool. Not many miles a week. Suppose any oil will do, huh? No, sir, it won't. Won't, huh? What's the pitch? The kind of driving your wife does is the hardest on big engines like you've got here. Stop and go driving? That's when sludge, acids, carbon, and what all collect fastest. Take my advice. This car needs the best oil. And the best is Dino Supreme Multigrade. Yeah, yeah. But if I need an oil change, I'm going back to my car dealer and use his brand of oil. No reason to go to all that trouble. Well, I don't want to do anything to lose my warranty. You won't. You'll protect your warranty. How so? Both Dino Supreme Multigrade and Dino Extra Duty are recognized as top quality by all car manufacturers and are acceptable under their warranties. Actually, they exceed warranty period specifications. So your warranty is fully protected with either of these oils. See this little valve? It's the key to the PCV system in all cars since 63 to reduce air pollution. So? If it gets clogged, your oil consumption goes up and corrosive vapors get trapped in your crankcase. It could require replacing. Cost you six or seven bucks for a new valve. <whistles> That's why I recommend Dino Supreme Multigrade an oil that gives extra protection against contaminants. It can save you money for only a few cents extra. Uh, I don't know. I've been using opaline. Now you say it's been replaced by uh, this dino dinoline? Yes, sir. A heavy-duty oil. Yeah, a little higher price, too. Uh, I don't know. My car is six years old. You, you got anything a little cheaper? Well, your car may be six years old, sir, but the engine's still in good condition. Doesn't use oil. It deserves the kind of protection the additives in this oil can give. And for a few cents more, it gets it. Okay, you tell me that both of these oils are tops. Then why should I pay ten cents more a quart for this one? For that ten cents more a quart, you get a multigrade oil. Multigrade? Yes. That means you have no worries about any sudden temperature or seasonal changes. Well, that's worth thinking about. And so is this. For that extra 10 cents, you also get Sinclair patented nickel compound, the best anti-corrosive, anti-wear additive that money can buy. Dino Supreme Multigrade is the best oil made. I think I get the general idea. It all boils down to this. If your customers never hear any different, they're never going to buy any different. That sort of puts the monkey on my back, doesn't it? And more profit in your pocket. I've got one final question. Shoot. All these improvements, additives, formulations, all to meet the need of these big engines coming out this year. And to take care of engine requirements for several years down the road. OK, down the road. But oh, now where does that leave us for present and past cars? They automatically benefit from these improvements, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah, I guess that makes sense at that. 
Dino Supreme Multigrade. There is no better oil at any price. Dino Extra Duty. The best single grade oil made. Dino Dinoline. A new heavy duty oil to replace opaline. Dino Econ Oil. A new oil to meet the needs of those older cars where oil consumption makes price a major factor. You know, I don't know how you fellas feel, but it looks to me as if we have something here. New names, more saleable names, new packaging to catch the eye. I'd say the whole thing adds up to something pretty good for us. And I mean more profits. You figure the same way? Say, that's my line. It's our line. The best motor oil ever. The finest money can buy. It took Dino almost 50 million years to become a movie star in one of the first animated cartoons ever filmed. And while this cartoon was laying him in the aisles, Hollywood discovered another up-and-coming star, the automobile. In 1916, there were only about as many cars in the entire United States as there are in metropolitan Chicago today. As you can see, it was a patient and brave soul who started out anywhere in the family car. Back in the teens, a man needn't expect any roadside service because there wasn't any. Most gasoline was sold at groceries, hardwares, bicycle shops, and feed stores. Car owners had to fix their own flats, change oil, do their own lubes, even make their own repairs unless they could talk the blacksmith into handling them between horses. just witnessed a great moment in history. The moment when American car owners started saying what they wanted in the line of service for their cars. Over the years, the job of giving the motorist what he wants and what he needs has grown to become the fourth largest business. Uh, give me two bucks worth of gas. What's wrong with a customer wanting gas, Bert? That's what you sell, isn't it? Yeah, sure I do. Lots of it. I just wish that once, not just once, someone would drive in here and say, hey, give me a new set of tires. <laughs> I'd fall over. In that case, Burke, you better brace yourself. just made it. I'm nearly out of gas, and I need a new set of tires. Yes, sir. Say, this sure is a beautiful classic. Mind if I ask how you got her? Well, I never heard of a car called a classic. This happens to be in Oakland, and I bought it new from the factory. Where else? Hmm, quite a place you have here. Where do you keep the groceries? Groceries? What's with him? 
Take it easy, Bert. He's one of the men who started the game, back in the days when groceries did sell gas. Gasoline was once sold as a convenience item or as a favor to the lunatics in their horseless carriages. Merchants and their clerks took care of gasoline sales only when they could spare the time from their regular customers. Things certainly didn't change overnight, but in the past 50 years, the car owner has been given everything he's asked for and a lot more besides. Today, the service station business is a full-time job for hundreds of thousands of dealers and their service salesmen and mechanics. Through the years, it's become a very competitive business. With more cars on the road, more and more people are after a share of the dollars our customers spend. This year, car manufacturers will build more than nine million cars, several times as many cars as were in existence when old Betsy here came off the showroom floor. And every new car on the road means additional service business for someone. Business that a lot of people will try to get. And the customers? Well, aside from appearances, they don't seem to change very much. And if we don't keep after them all the time with better service and improved selling, somebody else gets their business. For example, some of our customers are buying tires at discount houses and department stores and antifreeze at the corner drugstore. But one thing we can be pretty sure about, our friends, the dry goods clerks and the soda jerks are all through selling gasoline. Now, our real competitors are in the same business we are in. Gasoline, that's the name of the game. The empty gas tank is still bringing them to us. And our main business is to bring more and more of them in. Well, I guess that makes sense. After all, if I can't get a man in to sell him gas, how can I get a chance to sell him anything else? Huh? Look at it this way, too. If you have a flock of regular, steady gasoline customers, how can competition get their TBA, lube, and specialty business away from you? Oh, and well, now I guess you're all set to tell me how to go about getting that flock of gasoline customers, huh? Well, okay, remember, you insisted. Let's take a setup like yours. You know, nothing fancy, but designed to help attract trade. The dealer knows that he only has a few seconds to catch a possible customer's attention as he drives up the street. So the station and driveways are spick and span to make a good first impression, clear of obstructions, and inviting, too. He may use pennants to catch the eye. And there'll be plenty of signs to list all the various services offered. One of them may be just exactly what the customer is looking for. A good island display with everything really clean and tidy makes the place look ready for business. And who knows, the passing motorist may be thirsty too. And refreshments in plain sight may be just what's needed to pull him in. Well, I realize all that. I guess I haven't quite got around to doing all those things you mentioned. But pennants don't make all that much difference. Now, what's the rest of the pitch? You tell us. Remember, you insisted. Of course, there's more to it than just fixing up the station. A dealer who wants to pick up some new customers had better make sure that he and anyone that the customer sees are neat and smart looking. Clean uniforms shaves and haircuts, and plenty of soap. When a customer drives in, the man who wants his business moves on the double. That drive alarm should have the same effect as a fire alarm. Any customer appreciates a friendly welcome. Good morning, sir. And if you happen to know his name, How are you this he's morning? really pleased when you use it. Can I fill it up with Dino Supreme? A good salesman doesn't leave the selling to the customer. He asks for the order and uses brand names. That means 20% more full tank sales. A man who knows his job and has been properly trained knows the cars his customers drive, knows where the hood latches, gas caps, and dipsticks are. He's careful not to cause damage to his customer's property. He watches out for hose scratches or spillage, and he makes sure that the gas caps won't be lost. 
He'll clean the windshield, too. And boy, do customers really like that. For any dealer who wants to make and keep new customers, the six-point safety check is a must. It takes only a few minutes to perform, and it gives you an opportunity to look for additional sales, such as tires, parts, and service. A live wire at the pump island doesn't miss many bets. And if there is any way to get under the hood, he'll find it. The sales he makes of oil, hoses, belts, and filters not only make for balanced selling profits, but if they're handled right, they help build customer confidence to keep him coming back for the same kind of service. Say, Bert, who do you know who operates like that? Well, I don't want to seem like I'm blowing my own horn, but I was describing the way that I try to operate. Both automobiles and the service station business have come a long way. And we've seen some ways to get more gasoline customers into our places of business by maintaining a good appearance and by offering prompt, efficient, and courteous service. It would certainly be interesting, and it might be helpful, if we could find out from a customer himself what he likes or dislikes. Of course, we remember this gentleman. His name, by the way, is Applegate. Alfred Aloysius Applegate III. Uh, but call me Al. Thank you, sir. I mean Al. Now, sir, would you tell us why you trade at this particular station? Oh, when I arrived a few minutes ago, the service salesman was busy with another customer. Good morning, Mr. Applegate. I'll be with you in just a minute. <laughs> now, that's smart service. Hey, I was pleased when I was uh, greeted by name and recognized. And the other customer was pleased, too, because he knew he wasn't being delayed. Ready, Mr. Applegate. Like most people, I appreciate fast service, even if I'm not really in a hurry. So I always feel I'm getting the deluxe treatment when there are two men working on my car. Just recently, the station owner here has speeded up his service even more by moving his... Uh, credit card gadget right out where the action is. You want to try? What? Yeah. And right, now put the card here in the small slot. That, that's it. Now the slip. Take the slip. Now the slip goes right here in the big head. A little over. Now pull it down. There. All the way. Now press hard. Very hard. There you go. Now look. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. I like to do business where I can see what I'm buying displays like this. And this. It helps remind me of this, some of the items I might need now. Or soon. <laughs> Here's some more things my family and I know we can always find at this station. <laughs> As I said, more things. Clean restrooms. Very important to all of us, but especially to families. Making refreshments available. And even a place to relax if we have to wait a while for service. Shows a thoughtful management and consideration for our happiness. And they wash cars here, too. That brings me in regularly and gives the station a chance to point out some of my other needs. One sure way to keep my business is to give me fast pickup and delivery service on jobs I'd rather not wait for at the station. Getting my car back to me clean with the job done right and at the promised time is the mark of an efficient, well-managed operation. And that's the kind of place I like to do business with. Other than that, I think it's important for a gasoline dealer to be competitive. The hours he keeps. <laughs> the services he offers. And the prices he charges. Does that answer your question as to why I like to trade here? Indeed it does. And thank you, Mr. Applegate.
This is something we often see in our business. You might call it an occupational hazard. And it's here for a specific purpose, to remind us that a lot of our customers, and a lot of the customers we want to win away from our competitors, are women. And how should you treat women customers? Like goddesses, that's how. You're overjoyed to see it. You can hardly wait to clean those ashtrays and vacuum or sweep out the floor. If her ladyship learns to trust you to look out for her best interests, if she knows that you are trying to take good care of her car, you have a loyal customer. So that's how we get more people into our stations, improve our appearances, do a better job in service and selling, and get the ladies on our team. It's a great program. There's only one thing wrong with it. It won't work, unless we make it work. We can make it work if we spread the word. Let everyone in our community know we want their business. And if we keep reminding them, advertise, solicit, promote. Now, this is my favorite. On my letterhead, I mail out a special offer to lists I make up or get. New arrivals in the neighborhood, people who just bought new cars, or customers I haven't seen recently. Now, I tell them to bring in the letter I will give them a gift for the car, the home, or a toy for the kids. Yeah, it works, too. Yes, but what about the ones that don't come in? Oh, well, I phone them up, repeat my offer. And if they still don't respond? I go out and see them. Let them know I really want their business. Now, I'll admit I don't like to, but I find I have to. I call on my friends and get merchants behind us. And don't forget to take their applications for credit cards. Then they'll buy more when they come in. I found you have to keep at it. But one thing is sure. Business goes where it's invited and stays where it's well treated. Gasoline is my most important product. It's what gets them across that driveway. And once we get them in, we can sell them all their motoring needs. Provided you carry a full line, you can't sell what you haven't got. Oh, I've got the products. And I give service, too. I just wish that once, just once. Uh-oh, careful, Bert. Remember what happened before. Oh, no. <laughs> Not again. I hope you have plenty of 34 by 4 tires. And, oh yes, happy anniversary to all of us. <laughs>